Welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey, producer Chris once again behind the scenes. Happy March Madness. Uh, first day, opening day, still doesn't quite seem right whenever I phrase it like that. Uh, hopefully you had uh, Duquesne winning, as I did, which somehow was the least picked uh, 11 seed. You go based on vibes. BYU ain't got no vibes. We will spend today focusing, of course, though, on the, cow or on the Cowboys. Will they sign any more outside free agents before the draft is the qualifier I'll attach to this one. One for yes, zero for no. Uh, it is a 50-50 split right now in the pin poll, and I'm sure it will be something similar in the live chat as well. Will they sign any more? So far, they've signed one guy, Eric Kendricks. I think they will. It might only be one or two more, and it's probably not going to be a very exciting name, and a decent chance that at least one of them comes after the draft. With that approaching about a month away, not very good timing right there. So one for yes, zero for no. James, Jerry, Lee, ADA, CJ typing in their zeros. Dustin says zero. Uh, Jimmy, Olin, Don, William type in their ones. I hope that it ends up being one. It'd be nice to have something to be excited about. Like, hey, they signed somebody different. Let's Because they're only going to sign cheap players. So it's easy to say this is a good individual move. It's just that the overall totality of not doing anything is highly, highly frustrating. So 50-50 spoon, now 51% say no. So a narrow, narrow lead uh, from that perspective. Ooh, it keeps flipping between 50, 50, 50, 50. So I'll see, I'll see if that changes at all throughout today's live show. We do have our super chat menu here once again for all you lovely folks out there. $10 gets you into the signed Drew Pearson mini helmet raffle. That will be done at the end of the month. $50 for a beer bong. The deal today is still $20. Uh, dollars for a shot. We'll ride with that for one more live show. We'll change that up later on uh, as we get closer to the end of the Drew Pearson mini helmet raffle. But that is the super chat menu. We will spend time as well today on Stefan Gilmore. Do you want him back with the Dallas Cowboys? Y for yes, N for no. I'll give some shout outs as these flow in here. Daniel says yes. I think the longer Gilmore goes unsigned, probably means his market's not very great. And then you can, I think running it back corner actually makes sense for Dallas. Uh, maybe get a young guy in there, but I, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, the, maybe the market's cheap enough they'll have interest there, but it's, it's got to be cheap. They don't want to spend, which is insane to me. Uh, Curtis, Omar, Gabe, CJ, Charles, uh, James, John, it's all yeses in there in the live chat right now. I don't think I've seen a no. Uh, looking for a singular. No, there's one. No, from JT the pipe layer. Uh, he says no. Everyone else says yeah. Mar Marcus Arnold says uh, Eric Scott. It, was that a Dan Quinn pick or not? If it was a Dan Quinn pick, uh, he's kind of on shaky ground as a, as a former day three pick. Hunter says no, unless it's five million dollars or yes. That might be how the Cowboys treat it. You know, Kendall Fuller got eight million dollars. Shaq Griffin got six. Maybe somewhere in between that range uh, is where he ends up going for, but we'll, we'll keep an eye on that one. Why for yes and for no, JT, he's, he's a plumber, Tom. This sounds kind of dirty, though, so it's funny. Uh, we will also have you guys, if you dare, I know what the grades are going to be. Great Cowboys free agency so far. A, B, C, D, or F. Should be a very low grade, right? Uh, not gone well in any capacity. Uh, just very frustrating, disappointing, etc. F, 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 D minus F, F, F minus F, Z, D plus, F plus, D minus, A plus, D plus, F, 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 A plus. I don't know how you give it an A plus. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. We have a $5 super chat from my guy Mark. J. Day does not trust Dak and is being politically correct and is taking. He's not worth $60 million. The cap goes up, but everyone's pay does as well, not just the quarterback. True, the cap 
and the quarterback contracts have gone up at a relatively similar rate, uh, you're talking about maybe a 3 or 4% difference. I don't know if that is really enough to freak out about the... The sticker shock's real, I get it. But even, even before you know, these massive quarterback jumps, like, eh, it's talking maybe 3%. That's kind of it there. I will say, if they are tanking, they're doing a very bad job of it. Like, you have a top 10 quarterback that's going to prevent you from bottoming out the way you need to. Like, if they're tanking, they're, they're not doing a good job of it. It's hard to find quarterbacks who can have one second-team All-Pro year. If you're going to tank, you have to do it the right way, and that's bottom out. And they seem to be fairly scared of doing that, by the way. So great Cowboys free agency so far. A, B, C, D, or F in the comments section. Uh, no surprise, there were a lot of Fs in the uh, live chat. Who do you have winning the NCAA tournament this year uh, from the men's side, by the way? Who do you got winning? Producer Chris, you, you went with, who was your pick again, by the way? Who'd you lock it in as? I went with Tennessee. Tennessee? Yeah. Bold been, picking Rick Barnes. They've been pretty good all year. They won the regular season SEC mm -hmm. tournament, or not tournament. They won mm -hmm. the regular season SEC championship, lost in the tournament, but... I think that's kind of that kick in the ass that they needed to kind of wake back up. They played really good defense, and that's what the that's what the tournament's all about is playing good yeah. defense. Uh, Moorhead State, by the way, jumped out to a nine nothing lead over number th uh, three ranked Illinois, but Illinois got a three and now clawing the way back into it. Creighton took down Akron, by the way. Some shout outs for you guys have winning in this one: Houston, Seton Hall, I don't even know. Uh, Houston. Arkansas, Connecticut. Oh, Arkansas didn't even make it. Uh, UConn, Duke, UConn, Kentucky, Houston, Texas, Iowa State, UNC. I know nothing about college basketball, so I have North Carolina winning. Same. Well, actually, I, I don't know much either. Like, it's all, I, I, I am now just purely vibes-based. I used to watch a lot more, uh, but with the kid and jobs, it, just, it's not, it kind of fell by the priority of wayside. Like, oh, in the past like two years or so. So it's all vibes-based. Uh, vibes-based got me going UConn, and I don't trust certain, uh, certain coaches either. Florida, Houston, Florida, Nebraska. Uh, now we're just, that's interesting from that perspective. Uh, okay, C.J. DeYoung III has Seton Hall for the NIT, you mean? Uh, they might, I think, they're, I think they're A1 in the NIT, so that actually wouldn't be too surprising uh, from that perspective as Big East kind of got the short end of the stick. Uh, this year in, in the chaos that was the, the, the championship weekend for everything there. Uh, Illinois just turned it over, and then uh, Moorhead State gave it away immediately, and then Illinois gave it away immediately. So very sloppy play in that game. Uh, I see UConn, Duke, Tennessee, but I know nothing about either. Uh, Arizona, Purdue, Duke, UConn, Florida, Oral Roberts. There has been a trend of a dirty name when you think about it. Winning an upset or pulling an upset in March Madness, so certainly would be entertaining from that perspective. We just need Longwood to pull through. Yeah, I need need, need Longwood. I'm sure against Houston. Mo I, Moorhead State yeah. is currently up over Illinois. Things that make you go, hmm. Uh, I see Boise State in there, uh, which is funny. Uh, New Mexico, Arizona. Oh, CJ says I have no idea, man. That's my college. There you go, CJ. I like it. All right, if once we get to 100 likes, we will begin today's show. We are at 68. One away, I know, one away from getting there organically, you know. But 100 likes, and we'll begin today's show. In the meantime, we'll just keep an eye on the games going on. Uh, UNC up by 12 over Wagner, no surprise there. Uh, for a little bit, looked like Long Beach State could pull off an upset over Arizona, they were up by four at one, or four at five, something like that, at one point in the kind of midway, later part of the first, first half. And they are now down 65 to 49. So Arizona's on pace to winning that one. And Moorhead State with an early lead over Illinois. That one certainly bears watching. Nothing forward. Uh, so he just says he was like number 69. And we get to 100 likes now on today's show officially. Coming up live on the Cowboys Report, news and rumors, updates across the board for you guys, free agency, trades, etc. Some of the top free agent targets left who actually could maybe be affordable for Dallas, so super, super cheap names there. A mailbag, 
Get your questions in via hashtag Cowboys or via Super Chat. And a seven-round Dallas Cowboys mock draft. All coming up live here on the Cowboys Report. Let's talk the latest here on Stephon Gilmore and the Dallas Cowboys. His future remains pretty darn uncertain. He is still unsigned, and the longer he goes without a lot of buzz on his market, the greater a chance is of him maybe returning to Dallas. The last real reporting we've seen was from Mass Live. Of course, they mostly cover the Patriots, Gilmore's own te old team. Here's what they reported. While Stephon Gilmore's stated preference is to return to the Dallas Cowboys, where he, uh, where he provided a much-needed boost for Jerry Jones' defense last season, a source told Mass Live the veteran corner was open to all options, including another go-round with the Patriots. At this stage, we are well into a week, almost two weeks, of NFL free agency. And maybe you guys have seen more. I haven't actually seen really much of anything. It has been very quiet for Stephon Gilmore. There's not a lot of buzz about his market and meeting with this team, meeting with that team, getting this amount of money. That likely means, sometimes there are exceptions, but it likely means his market hasn't been great. That there has not been a team that stepped up in a major way and gotten him paid. So I think that gives the Cowboys a chance to bring back Gilmore if they want to, if they want to spend whatever that number ends up looking like for Stephon Gilmore, which I do have interest in doing. I think running it back a corner actually makes sense. You have Trayvon Diggs come with the torn ACL. Perhaps it is the recent, you know, trigger history, trauma history of Terrence Steele, Michael Gallup not playing very well, coming back from their own ACLs. You think Gilmore, Diggs will be going to go for camp. The hope is he's back to performance, not just back to playing. Deron Bland is cornerback, too. Loved what I saw from him last year. Jordan Lewis can be your nickel. It's the depth in, in the event that one of those guys get injured. You've lost corners two straight years, by the way. It's Deshaun Wright who couldn't get on the field. Eric Scott redshirted as a, fresh, as a first year player. And I like Israel Mukwamu. I don't know how Dallas feels about him. We haven't seen him do very much in real games, making him a bit of an unknown wild card there. But Gilmore has lost a step. Uh, of that, there is really no doubt as far as I'm concerned. He has, he has not been the same caliber player that he was at his peak, but he can still help you. And he's still intelligent to, I think, fit pretty well with what Mike Zimmer wants to do uh, on the defensive side of the football. It's a matter of, is the money going to be right for the way Dallas likes to self-impose their money spending? So should the Cowboys bring back Stephon Gilmore? Why for yes and for no? It'll be the pinned comment on this video. If that ad plays on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there, go vote. I want to spend a bit of time here on Michael Gallup somehow, some way. Uh, Sports Illustrated mentioning the possibility of, hey, maybe the Cowboys try to bring back Gallup after he was cut. The vet minimum versus $9.5 million that he did to make base salary-wise and with a roster bonus too, is very different. The two very different sides of the spectrum. And if you were paying Gallup the vet minimum, you probably wouldn't have cut him in the first place anyway. However... Michael Gallup, among other wide receivers, are set to visit the Baltimore Ravens on Thursday. And there's also the argument of, he doesn't help you on special teams, do you need a limited number three corner, that, or receiver? Excuse me, that's something that I think is very much worth having a discussion over. And I don't, in general, love the idea of bringing back the guy you just cut. I feel like you could do it with an upgrade or at least a younger piece. More on this to come, though. But today's episode is brought to you by 8Sleep, the high-tech solution to your age-old sleeping issues. 8Sleep's Pod 3 cover slips right over your mattress, bringing you heating and cooling tech that keeps you comfortable and sleeping deeper for a better, more restful night. Did you know that sleep science shows in order to sleep our best, our body temperature uh, needs to be dropping in the early, in the middle part of sleep, and then rising in the morning. The 8 Sleep Pod Cover will improve your sleep by automatically adjusting your bed's temperature based on your individual needs. The cover is added to any bed like a fitted sheet is and allows you and your partner to cool or warm 
your side of the bed by as low as 55 degrees and up to 110 degrees. There's no better way to improve your day-to-day -day life with better sleep, and the easiest way to do that is with the 8 Sleep Pod 3. On average, pod users see their sleep quality improve by 32% after just a month on the pod. So go to 8sleep.com slash chat sports and get $200 off plus free shipping on the pod cover by 8 Sleep. Start the new year right and invest in the rest you deserve with the 8 Sleep Pod. Links in the comments and the description of today's show. The Ravens are in the wide receiver market, by the way. Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman, Nelson Aguilar, Tylen Wallace, and Sean Ryan. That's not exactly a strong core of receivers. And I would not be opposed to Dallas upgrading over Jalen Tolbert at wide receiver. But how does Gallup on a veteran minimum actually do that? This was a player the Cowboys had ignored the money in the regular season and were just sharing time with him with Jalen Tolbert because his numbers have regressed every season. The injury has caused major problems there. I am down to find another wide receiver. Now, the free agency class, including Michael Gallup, doesn't really move the needle for me. What's the benefit of going down this path of, you know, cutting Michael Gallup, then bringing him back? The kind of that's not how most teams do business. I don't, I don't think it makes much sense uh, for the Cowboys organization. But I do want to hear from you, the people. Do you want to bring back Michael Gallup? S for you want to sign him. P for you'd pass on him. Sound off in the comments. A trade idea coming in here next. It's on Javante Williams, suggested by Blog and the Boys. Among other trade names at running back that have emerged, Williams is noteworthy for a couple reasons. A, look, frankly, he wasn't great in his return from injury. Uh, didn't look like the same guy we saw in his rookie season out of North Carolina. The big issue, though, was less about the Cowboys wanting him and more about, well, why would Denver move on? And if Denver is trying to move on, then you know what, what, what's your goal uh, in terms of adding a player that the team doesn't want and doesn't have a great option behind them? The numbers don't lie. I think that there will be a better version of Javante Williams in 2023 than the one we saw, or in 2024, excuse me, the one we saw in 2023. But that was not a premier football player this past season. And that should raise some concerns. And in the end, I don't think he's obtainable from Denver. You know, a guy like Roche, like uh, Khalil Herbert, I think could make some sense. But Jaleel McLaughlin and Samaj P. Ryan are not featured backs. Now, maybe Denver drafts a running back super early. That's certainly possible. And then maybe McLaughlin or P. Ryan or Williams ends up getting moved. But short term, I don't see how it makes sense for, for Denver. I do think Dallas will come out of the NFL draft within the first two days with a new back. I don't think they want to enter the fourth round where they might not have a pick anyway. Maybe they trade for one. And it's Rico Dowdle, Deuce Vaughn, Leek Davis, fullback hybrid Hunter Lipke, and Snoop Connor. That's not, mm, that's not a very good running back room. I'm down to be affordable and cheap at the running back spot, but you have to have something back there still. It's not that running backs don't matter, period. It's when we say running backs or when running backs don't matter is said, it means they're not as important. They are easier to replace. That doesn't mean you don't have one on the roster. So put your Cowboys trade targets, running back or others, in the comment section for me right now. We did break down some trade targets. I mentioned a few backs in that video. Please check it out on the channel. And make sure you guys are subscribed if you're not already. Look, we are the bigger channel than Giants now. We're always kind of having the built-in advantage there. The lack of moves made by Cowboys have not led to new audience, understandably so. But I know a good portion of you are watching and you're still not subbed. Let's get that changed. Hit that sub button for me right now. Now, ESPN has argued that the top fit for offensive guard Lincoln Tomlinson is with the Dallas Cowboys and helping out to replace Tyron Smith. Here was their argument. With Tyron Smith leaving Dallas for Tom, Tomlinson's old team to take over as Aaron Rodgers' left tackle, the Cowboys have a hole on their offensive line. If Dallas wants to move 2022 first-round pick Tyron Smith from left guard to left, to left tackle, Tomlinson could step in at left guard where his size 
would be a plus for a team that had failed to impress in short yardage situations and goal line situations a year ago. That's true, except for the fact that Lakin Tomlinson wasn't good last year for the Jets. Uh, got beat a lot in pass protection and didn't hold up very well in run blocking. If you want to add Tomlinson, okay. I think I would rather play Brock Hoffman or TJ Bass over him. Like, I'm not trying to find a guard. I'm trying to find a usable guard. And I would have concerns about whether or not Lincoln Tomlinson could fit that mold, especially for the Cowboys' style of offense. You know, he fits the Shanahan-based run scheme. Unless they're going to adopt more of that, which I wish they would, I don't, I don't think that's a good fit for Dallas. I want you guys to grade Cowboys free agency so far. A, B, C, D, or F in the comment section. I'll give some shout-outs here, by the way, as Illinois and uh, Moorhead State three-point game selection. That, that, that could be a good one. Although I said the exact thing about Arizona Long Beach State today for March Madness, and uh, Arizona's up by 18, so maybe that's not the case there. Uh, yeah, you can grade again, though, Madman. Not, and not everyone watches at each point. So we asked some questions over in, in a couple different times there. L for lame. Good answer, Johnny. Good answer, Johnny. F, F minus D, D, F, negative Z, weak D. F, that, that, that's a pause. Uh, that's a pause. A super F, F minus, F, D, F, D, F, F, D, F, D, F, D for dumb. I like it. Mark. Like or hate Dak, J.J. is all over. Won't commit to Dak. Gets free agents. Resign guys like Hankins or Gilmore. Guys let go with no replacements but says he's all in. He, they were never all in. That's simply like our version of all in. They were never going to be. And everyone ate that shit up. And I, I'm like, I don't buy this, guys. And everyone wanted, wanted to ignore me because they wanted to believe it. And I get it. They, everyone wanted to believe it. I get it. At least some of the other, other Cowboys outlets were like, see, they're all in. I'm like, ah, let's do the actual quotes. Let's talk about paying Lamb and... and Micah, the weird part about Dak is this is the exact same thing they did last time. Like, they just, they didn't pay him until the very last second, basically. And it was all very strange. And they should know by now what their path is. They're also not committing to, like, anybody. Like they're doing all these one-year deals. Their whole coaching staff is basically on a one-year deal. That's not normal. Um, are you good? I would, I, I would love them, I, and I've, I've said it a thousand times, I'll keep saying it. Make up your mind. Go be aggressive, create your window in the next three to five years, or rebuild now. Very strange. Uh, by the way, Hankins did sign with Seattle. So, off the list. Marcus Arnold, if you want to receive the special teamer, why not go with Cavante Turpin or Jalen Brooks? Uh, I, I probably should have clarified my language. You're, you're, you're right, by the way. Uh, once you get down to like receiver three and like receiver four and five, more importantly, those guys have to help on special teams. Because you're going to have to have that. And you saw the issue with Tolbert this year, not being a great special teamer either. If you're not allowing yourself to have that depth of having your number four in particular receiver like help out on teams, that guy's not playing that much for you. And I think that Gallup is probably receiver four if he were to come back and he's not helping on special teams. So you kind of get into a return on your investment issue there. Here's today's Super Chat menu. $10, the signed Drew Pearson mini helmet entry raffle. That'll be done at the end of the month. The Beer Bong Hall of Fame, $50 for that one. And $20 is a shot. So we will see what happens as these Super Chats come in today. $10, $50, $20 $10, are the price points. If you have not already, please make sure you guys are also following the Cowboys Report on Instagram. Past the 500 follower mark. Thank you all so much. We will continue to post reels and more over there on that platform. Help us out with the follow at Cowboys Report IG. Uh, a bit easier sometimes to find the reels than sometimes the YouTube shorts side is. The Cowboys have done very, very little in NFL free agency. There are still, though, some free agents who are potentially helpful and cost-effective for what the Cowboys' self-imposed limitations are. Of course, if you have doubts about whether or not the Cowboys will sign any of the names we're about to talk about, I get it. It's a very frustrating situation. Will the Cowboys sign any more outside free agents? One for yes, zero for no. Sound off and speak your mind in the comments section. 
Let's go through some players here. We'll begin on the defensive line side. Clayus Campbell, I think, will be a bit more expensive than what Dallas likes. But given the complete lack of depth this team has on the interior of the defensive line, I would have interest. He can help me out as a run-stopping defensive end. He can reduce inside. That would be intriguing to me. I just think the money might be an issue. Tyre Tart is a run-stopping nose guard, of which this team has one on the roster in Mozzie Smith as of filming. The issue for Tart is he's overplayed his hand a little bit, I think. Uh, he was a bit of a problem child in Tennessee this year, got cut by them. Bengals brought him in for a visit, said, ah, this is not a culture fit, actually. That's, that's a red flag, but when you're into wave three or four whatever of free agency, you kind of put yourself in a precarious spot of your, with your available options. Linval Joseph, uh, look, you want another big veteran run stopper on the interior, right? I think that is something this team has to find a way to do. And I will mention Linvold, despite not playing very much this past year for the Buffalo Bills, he spent a lot of time with Mike Zimmer in Minnesota. Maybe he still has just a little bit left to give in the tank. How about a Cowboys legend? Carlos Watkins got hurt, missed a lot of time this past year, but he's done good things as a run stopper previously. Bringing him back actually could be a pretty decent idea. Lawrence Guy is not the player he was in his prime, but he could be able to help again with that run-stopping focus. He's a bigger body than some of the players on this roster, and I'm trying to find some much, much needed defensive line depth. Now, Jordan Phillips is a very large human being. This would truly be a run-stopping nose guard. You know, other players on this list, you could say maybe they're more three techniques, five techniques, that's certainly fine. The available nose guard list is super thin with Hankins now in Seattle. And I'd like to find a veteran to help out Mozzie Smith. You can be honest. I know how these votes are going to go. Do you like what the Cowboys have done in free agency so far? It's going to be no's. That's fine. If the ad comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Go type in your N for no. Or if you're different, Y for yes. Let's talk Andre Dillard here as we begin our offensive line conversation. Uh, Dillard was not very good this past year for Tennessee. No way around it. He straight up struggled. Uh, now, maybe it was a scheme change issue. I shouldn't have been that big of a problem there. The available left tackles are profoundly thin. So I am doing my best to find somebody who's available, and Dillard stands out as a stopgap option, maybe if the draft does not go the Cowboys' way. Makai Becton is next up here, the Jets' left tackle. Very curious what his market ends up looking like. Um, you know, Becton is the former first-round pick, the Will McClay special, impressive athlete for his size, has had injury problems, and has struggled when he's been out there. Again, it is, it is now late March. My options are extremely limited. A more proven veteran, but one coming off injury issues, is David Bakhtiari. Maybe he's not a Jet with Aaron Rodgers. I think the medical would have to be cleared from that perspective, but it's a big enough name that if he stays healthy, it could actually make some sense. Saints offensive lineman Andres Peters, played both tackle and guard, I think is a better option at guard. I wonder, though, if this team is trying to find a way to keep Tyler Smith at left guard, and they think he's going to be best there. If that's the case, okay. Pete might not make as much sense. Numbers dipped this past year. He's been better when he's at guard. Again, a former high-round pick out of Stanford. Fits the Will McClay special. Am I scraping some of the bottom of the barrels? Yes. But I am already kind of pretty limited on options. Now, if you want a Cowboys jersey, not from the Cowboys team shop, but through Fanatics. You can get one for under $100 when you go to chatsports.com slash Cowboys jersey. Put that link in the comment section and the description of today's show. These are official Nike jerseys, by the way. Plenty of different players, Lamb, Parsons. Maybe you want to hold off on the DAC one. That's certainly fine, too. Chatsports.com slash Cowboys jersey. I'll make sure that link gets put in the comment section and the description of today's video. Kendall Lamb is next up. He subbed in with injuries along the Dolphins' offensive line, and 
did some good things. I think what intrigues me most about Kendall Lamb, for some of the other names you mentioned, this screams swing tackle to me. This, this, and I think the Cowboys would like to get a veteran swing tackle. They do that seemingly every single offseason. Lamb, I think, could check off that box depending on what his, his asking price looks like. Now, Connor Williams, the Cowboys legend again here, is very intriguing to me. He will be much more affordable if and when that medical gets checked out. There, that's why he's unsigned right now. The medical is a sizable red flag for Connor Williams. He's, he's not trying to sign right now. He's trying to rehab instead. He had played really well, though, at center for the Dolphins before he went down. So because of that, I think it's a name to at least consider uh, for Dallas if the medical checks out. This would probably be a post-June 1st potential signing, but by the way. Now, Dalton Reisner was serviceable for Minnesota, didn't allow a sack, but also allowed 30 hurries, which your pressures, excuse me, which is a lot higher figure uh, than what you would typically like to have out of your starting left guard. But the reliability factor is certainly still there to, a, to an extent. I think that if you plugged him in at left guard, you could do a lot worse. And maybe let him compete with like a TJ Bass or something for that starting spot. And at least gives you extra depth on the interior in the event of injury. So name a free agent who you want to see the Dallas Cowboys sign. Any player, any position, realistic names, please, though. Sound off in the comments section. I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to find some more help along the defensive line. Edge rusher is certainly included there. And I think Michael Dana is an under-the-radar name who can do some run-stopping stuff for this team as well. And you know, with Sam Williams, we'll see how he plays this year, but Dorrance Armstrong and Dante Feller gone, I'm looking for a fourth veteran option so I don't have to add edge draft pick to my lengthy needs list. And then if there is one I like, I can still take them. An intriguing name to me who did briefly overlap with Mike Zimmer is Yannick Ngakwe of the most recently the Chicago Bears. So there's the Matt Eberflus, former Cowboys uh, assistant coach connection there. I think in the Dante Fowler role, one year, $3 million, that, that makes a lot of sense to me if he's willing to sign for something that cheap. Emmanuel Ogbo, who had previously been linked to the Dallas Cowboys as well, uh, some years ago, his numbers have kind of fallen off. He's not the same guy he was in his prime. But if they're open to the one year, $3 million price tag range like it was for Fowler, maybe they aren't, which is insane to think about, but it's where we're at right now. I think Ogba could also fit that mold. Carl Lawson would very much fit the price tag range for this team. Had, did not play much this past year for the Jets. When he has played, injuries have been a factor. He's actually played pretty well. So if you want that buy low, vet minimum style, maybe close to vet minimum, style signing that I think could give you good return on your investment, you could win the deal as the Cowboys love to do, Lawson stands out to me. And I wouldn't be, even be mad at that one. Kyle Van Noy had a surprisingly good year for the Baltimore Ravens. Nine sacks. I think that is more of a flash in the pan than anything given his age. But in four different spots, he's put up at least five sacks. Now, I think he could probably play some of that uh, pass rushing, even you know, stand-up Anthony Barr style linebacker stuff for Mike Zimmer while still being able to be a, a more of a pure edge than Barr ever was. I'm intrigued by his fit in a Mike Zimmer defense. Uh, as he is now 32 years old, the market should be pretty limited for him. I'd say when, but they only did it one time. So if the Cowboys sign an outside free agent, we will have a video for you. Hit that sub button right now, youtube.com slash at Cowboys TV. The Cowboys have brought back Rico Dowdle. Despite that, I do think the running back market is an area this team will continue to look at. And J.K. Dobbins, after the draft, could be a very logical target for the Cowboys. Texas kid has barely played football, one-year deal, limited guaranteed money, let him rehab, get healthy, see what he can offer. And if you draft the right guy, you're not banking on him having to make any money. You can't do that. Dobbins kind of ends up being, to an extent, a luxury addition, where if he's cheap enough, maybe the Cowboys see some value. Now, if they want to draft a power back, maybe, and want to go with a speedier back, 
some names that make sense. Clyde edwards alaire starts things off here for us. Has not been productive this past year. I think the scheme fit was not very good. Don't know if it's a great scheme fit for the uh, for the Cowboys either. But former first round pick does have some third down back value. So too does Ceh's teammate Jarek McKinnon, who put up okay numbers at times in Kansas City. Did overlap with Mike Zimmer, by the way. Feels like that's something also worth mentioning in these conversations. I'll put him in here for some of you. Uh, I do think the re the re-signing of Rico Dowdle probably takes the Cowboys out of the Ezekiel Elliott market. The things that Zeke has done well in recent years are also the things that Dowdle actually did a pretty decent job for last year. And I would argue should have had more opportunities to do them, by the way. Um, no real buzz on a market for Zeke. That's not surprising when you know, we're talking about from 4.2 to 3.5 drop-off in yards per carry. It's not, it's not a great thing. A under-the-radar name that kind of fits the J.K. Dobbins boomer bust mindset is Rashad Penny. He played pretty well when healthy in Seattle. He was never healthy. That was part of the issue. And then kind of fell out of favor in, uh, in Philadelphia. Never got anything going. Swift overplayed him. Boston Scott outplayed him. Could be a decent buy low under the radar boomer bust signing at the running back position. I don't think the Dallas Cowboys have that much interest in a veteran wide receiver. We'll see if that changes. I would like to be wrong because I want to do something for this team. Odell Beckham, though, is the name that's always linked to them. He did take a visit on Thursday to the Miami Dolphins. We'll see what, mat what materializes from that. But I'd rather find someone, ideally a draft pick, who offers a bit more juice athletically at this stage in OBJ's career. Some safeties. The safety market's still doing pretty well, guys. Justin Simmons may be looking for a bit more than he'll end up getting. Maybe the market drops into the right price tag range. He's, a, he's, an, he's an instinctual football player. And Mike Zimmer loves those guys. I would have interest. Quandre Diggs, also on this list. Uh, again, smart football player. You saw some drop-off in his play this past season. He was expensive for Seattle. That's why he got cut. He had been linked more speculatively in years past to Dallas. The last time we thought he was kind of on the, on the decline, the Seahawks traded for him, and he played really well. Maybe there's part two of that version. Jamal Adams, I will also include here because, you know, we are old enough to oh, we're all enough to remember those Jamal Adams rumors as crazy as they once were. Thanks, Seattle, for up two firsts that the Cowboys were never going to do and none of us wanted to do either. Injuries have really caused a problem for him. Uh, some of the social media comments have rubbed people the wrong way as well. But my biggest issue, I don't need another safety who thinks he's a linebacker. I have those guys already. Stephon Gilmore, one of the few uh, internal free agents I still have interest in bringing back for the Dallas Cowboys. Why not Gilmore? You do that, you are in great shape short-term at cornerback. I think it makes a lot of sense for all parties involved if the money works out. So what is the percent chance the Cowboys bring back Stephon Gilmore? Sound off for me in the comment section right now. Another veteran corner to keep an eye out for is Patrick Peterson, thanks to some, you know, some connections uh, from his time over the past few years uh, in the NFL. The, the prime version of Patrick Peterson, I don't really think is going to ever return. I think that's kind of an unrealistic ask, but he did play for Mike Zimmer, however brief that time was. Maybe Zim thinks he can make the most out of him. The same way with another former uh, first-round pick at corner, uh, who had such a great career uh, with Mike Zimmer in a second stint, <clears throat> Terrence Newman. Trey White, the medicals matter a lot here. He's taking visits. We'll see how those materialize as well. If the medicals check out, maybe somebody else uh, ends up adding him. If they don't, they could always revisit later on, but I wouldn't mind a veteran outside corner. Just throwing that out there. Xavier Howard is next up on the list. Again, he can do some man coverage stuff. He's lost a step too but I think is intelligent enough as a football IQ guy to fit with, with what Mike Zimmer would prefer to do on defense. He said he'd take less to, to, to join a contender. He's going to take less no matter what, by the way. Adore Jackson, the former USC corner who Dallas did like a decent amount coming out uh, when he was a first-round pick by Tennessee. Not the biggest guy, 
but I think could offer some inside-outside flex. And even with Jordan Lewis back and Deron Bland under contract, too, I think makes some sense for Dallas. C.J. Henderson, former first-round pick. My size, not a good tackler. Maybe that fits Mike Zimmer. Maybe it doesn't. Has not lived up to expectations, by the way, which I do think is, is a pretty sizable red flag. Uh, but as a buy-low option, sure. Why not? Want you guys to grade Cowboys free agency for me since we just went through a long list of names. They can maybe sign that I'm not going to get my hopes up for because they just don't like to do things uh, that way. Grade free agency, A, B, C, D, or F. I think it'll be a lot of Fs uh, in the end. Uh, scores from March Madness, for those of you who care at all. Uh, Oregon, uh, first like two minutes of the game, up 3-0 over South Carolina. Arizona's up by 20 over Long Beach State with a minute 09 to go. UNC's up by 18 in the second, so they're going to win that game. Illinois has retaken a lead over Moorhead State, uh, 36-31 in that game. I did put some money on South Carolina because they were underdogs the 60, and I got excited about it. I'm like, let's, let's do it. I think they're a good team. I don't really buy Oregon. We'll see how that all plays out. 5-0 uh, now for Oregon, by the way. We will get to a mailbag. Uh, Blazing Daily. We'll get to your super chat as part of the mailbag, by the way, my friend. Two ways to get on said mailbag. Number one is to use hashtag Cowboys. Puts you in the queue. Does put you at the mercy of producer Chris picking your question and throwing it up on screen. Or you guys can super chat. That is a guarantee to get on the show. In addition, there are some extra goodies for various super chats of increasing amount. $10, you are entered into our signed Drew Pearson mini helmet raffle. $10 on that front. $20 is the deal of the day. It's a shot. We want to have some fun, make it some, some madness in March here. $50 beer bong uh, is just especially out of there. We'll also put your name on the beer bong Hall of Fame uh, when you send in the 50. I got a few more names to add on that front, but I got to put two Anthony McMillans on there again. He's got like seven of the names on there. It's hilarious. Or something along those lines. $50 for that one. So get your questions in right now via hashtag Cowboys or by super chatting. The Cowboys Report has an Instagram page as well, at Cowboys Report IG. No more of people taking up our YouTube shorts and posting them on their own. We're going to post them on Instagram first. So go follow us over there at Cowboys Report IG. A super thanks to begin today's show. What happened to Jerry being all in? It seems like how can we do the bare minimum and still be a decent team? Uh, this is right. This is what it is. They don't want to commit to this year or next year or decommit to this year or next year. They don't want to spend money in free agency. They were never all in. You can even go back and read the actual quotes of what Jerry had said, and his all-in comments was, we're going to be all in on other guys than previously, meaning CeeDee Lamb and Micah Parsons. That's what they were all in on, as opposed to paying guys like Zeke, Amari Cooper, Tyron Smith, Zach Martin's about the book soon, Tank Lawrence on the book soon. They're going to pay those guys instead. And their all-in definition is not our in is not our all-in definition because they are wrong. They are wrong, full stop. From Marcus Arnold, a $5 super thanks. At some point, these backup linemen a chance to be starters. In theory, the backup get, uh, becomes a starter when the starter gets hurt. Why not when he retires or is released? I don't know who the backup left tackle is right now, but we should draft a new guy, let them battle it out. Only to find the next Terrence Hill is to give them a chance. I'm just saying. You're not wrong. The backups of note that are in that conversation. Austin Richards was a fifth-round pick last year out of North Carolina. Did not get on the field over Chuma Adoga. Maybe raises some red flags on that front. Matt Wiletsko was a day-three draft pick who was unable to stay healthy. TJ Bass, I think they might have found him there as a, as a UDFA. Brock Hoffman was a former sign player that came to the organization uh, via waivers and preseason stuff as well. The team likes him. He might be their starting center. But you also, when you have the opportunity to upgrade over the backups that you have on your roster via free agency to the draft, it makes sense to pursue that path, especially if you don't trust them. And that might be the case specifically at left tackle. From Larry, with one R, can the Cowboys trade for Damian Pierce? I mean, technically, yes. I don't think Pierce is as available as others seem to make him out to be 
Houston was in the market for Saquon Barkley. They eventually moved it to, to Joe Mixon, but Mixon's old. He's not the same caliber. Frankly, I think Houston never paid for Joe Mixon, by the way. I don't, I don't like the contract they gave him at all. But I think they still want to utilize Damian Pierce, too. Now, if I'm wrong on that, or more likely, if they draft somebody fairly early, I'm making a call. And I probably make a call anyway. I just don't, I think I like Cleo Herbert for the Bears could be more easily obtainable. And I wonder if Dallas wants the four years of contractual control on a day two pick. So will Dallas make a trade before or during the NFL draft involving a player, not just draft pick swaps? It's the pinned comment on today's video. The ad comes on YouTube. Take advantage of it. Why for yes and for no. From Blaze and Daily, all in. Nobody just, just to be talked about. Smith left tackle, draft best interior offensive lineman. I'd be fine with that plan. This is how, how Dallas has done uh, this offseason. The Gilmore market. Love you, bro. Appreciate it, Blaze and Daily. Um, look, I think that the, the Gilmore market's pretty quiet. We'll see if and when that changes in the not too distant future. Um, I think the offseason has been, been pretty bad. Whatever they're trying to do, whether it is rebuild or be better, they've done a bad job of it, and I don't like that. It's this, this half-in, half-out BS that's not going to lead to good results short-term or long-term. From Mark, bottom line, there is no free agent out there that can be an improvement over what we lost, and we don't have enough draft picks to fill the holes. Jerry Jones wants UDFAs. I, that's also my concern is you don't have enough draft picks to fill the holes. You got three top 150 picks, and I'm trying to find at least one offensive lineman, if not two. I'd love to get a dynamic receiver in, in, on day two, but I need a running back as well. I need probably multiple defensive tackles slash defensive ends. I need at least one young linebacker. I wouldn't mind a corner. Those are too many needs. I can't fill them all. So I don't know what this team's plan is going to be, frankly. From Tony, does bringing back Randy Gregory make sense? Actually, kind of, yeah. I think that bridge might have been burnt finally. Um, that, that negotiation between the agent and J Stephen Jones was a real problem uh, that did not end well. And I think the agent gets some blame there too, if we're being quite honest about it. But uh, I, I, if he had a different agent, maybe. I just I don't, know, I don't know how that relationship is at, at this point. So name a free agent. Who you guys want to go out and sign? Drop that player name or player's name for me in the comments. From Mark, Jones gets an A-plus doing great not resigning players, doing great not getting free agents, doing great not tanking all the way, doing great in the 2023 NFL draft. Spot the lie. I wish they'd go be aggressive and they, they kind of missed the boat for that. And they missed the boat to rebuild properly. I don't know. Sucks. Daniel M, sign Calais Campbell to defensive tackle, re-sign Gilmore to cornerback, sign Justin Simmons. Kind of plays more of a free throw, but it's fine. It's potato potato to an extent there. That's an elite defense right there. I still want a pass rusher, by the way, but I feel better about that unit than I would have been beforehand, right? You feel great about your, your, your back end. Campbell helps you at the defensive tackle. You can still stop the run a little bit too. I would have no complaints if they went out and did that. Do I think they will? Gold Fox 177 or 177. They're not signing Micah Hyde like his spirit. So it's a good deep safety crop still. The safety market has not been very good. So I would have interest there. Absolutely. I don't know what he's going to command. Uh, if it's anything more than three million bucks, I feel like Dallas says no. That's very frustrating. But I wouldn't be mad at a safety. There, there are options out there even beyond Micah Hyde. We got daily Dallas Cowboys videos for you. Plenty of draft coverage set to get going here in the not too distant future. So if you haven't already, hit that sub button right now. Food review. True best player available. What are you doing? Amarius Mims, tackle from Georgia. Brian Thomas, the receiver at LSU. Or Jackson Powers Johnson, the center out of Oregon. The trade market is down bad. So, I, so you're saying I, I can't trade down. Smart answer. Frankly, I'd be pretty thrilled with any of those guys. Uh, Cowboys picking 24. I would wager a good amount of money that all three of those guys, once I, once I get around to stacking them like a week to two weeks before the draft, I think they're all going to be in my top 24. 
I, the, the riskiest pick is definitely a Marius Mims. But he could be so good, guys. He's not raw. He just hasn't played. He's inexperienced. There, there is a, a difference. I'd feel probably most confident in, in Jackson Powers Johnson as being a really good center. I get, screw it. I'll go. I'll go. And I might sort of change my mind based on my actual big board. Uh, Mims, JPJ, Brian Thomas Jr. All pretty tightly compacted. From Tyler with the deep draft class, I think Dallas found a hidden gem like they did with Bland. I like Marcus uh, Ro Rosamie Jackson. That's the uh, receiver from Georgia, I believe, by the way. Cam Hart is the cornerback from Notre Dame. I think he goes day two, by the way, uh, Cam Hart. Julius Pearl is the tackle from Illinois, I want to say. I'll have to double check that one. Uh, Matt Lee is the center from Miami. Pretty sure Jaden Sheridan is the running back from Monmouth. Let me double check Julius Pearl here uh, to make sure I'm giving the correct school before I look like an idiot. Because uh, I have not done him yet, by the way. Yeah, Illinois tackle. I was right. Um, I don't love the depth, frankly. You know, once I get to the seventh round, I go, oh, I don't like these guys at all. This is not a good class. I think depth kind of dies out around fifth round-ish. But there, there will be gems that you find. There absolutely will be. Um, I like Matt Lee on that list. Need some technique work, but athletically, and the results were pretty good at Miami. I, I'd be kind of intrigued by that one a, a pretty decent amount. Now, if you have not already, please follow us on Instagram. The at Cowboys Report IG is the handle. We will continue to post shorts over there on the Dallas Cowboys. Blazing Daily back again. Trade down. Get the best interior offense lineman and chop Robinson if he falls. I doubt chop Robinson will fall to you uh, in the in the, in the, in the se 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 second round. But I like the trade down idea. Give me another top, you know, one twenty-ish draft pick, third or fourth round, great. And I can still get, I think, a good, very good interior offensive lineman. Maybe the best guy on their board's gone, but the second or third guy should still be there and still be a pretty highly graded player as well. From Mark again, Jerry Jones runs a team like a business. Doesn't account for the cap going up. Just a few players is all we needed. I'm gonna watch the view instead of the draft. We will be live, by the way for the NFL draft, so I hope you guys tune in uh, and, and watch us instead of the view. But I appreciate that, Mark. From Carl, make Odell Beckham the number three wide receiver. Eh? I don't... I Look, he, I really thought they were going to sign him a year and a half ago, whatever it was, or two years ago, almost at this point. The issue was the medicals didn't check out. Like, that is why Dallas said no, that... Beckham wasn't ready to help. I think that kind of rubbed Dallas the wrong way a little bit. And he wasn't that great for the Ravens. And he's still looking for a decent-sized contract. So that minimum, sure, that's always fine. I would like to find some more athletic juice than Odell Beckham brings at this stage. Do you want Odell Beckham? This is your chance for a truly classic answer. OBJ for yes, no BJ for no. Clayton Lockhart. How does it make sense for anyone to ask Dak to take a discount so they can have money to spend when they haven't spent money in almost three decades? This is part of the issue, right? They had Dak on an incredibly cheap contract. Who did they sign? They didn't do anything. They've had Dak on a very manageable cap hit, too. He has not been high until this year. And they didn't sign anybody either. If, 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 Dak, if they want Dak to take less... If I were Dak, I'd be like, you know what? Fine. It is written into my contract. You must spend this amount of money in free agency each year on outside players. Cowboys would never do that, though, is the big issue. Joseph Ian Torres. The Saints having signed Chase Young. Would you pursue Peyton Turner if released? Defensive plays interior when healthy to add some depth that has been lost. Yeah, I'd be down, especially if he's cut. Turner's been kind of disappointing. Dallas did like him, though. Offers a different body type than what they have. I think that's valuable along the interior slash defensive end. If cut, yeah. I don't think he gets cut, though. And, you know, unless they want to trade him for a day three draft pick, I'd be a bit surprised if they went down that path. But it is a good thought, and I think the Cowboys will have interest in seeing who gets cut uh, between now, post-draft, and even later on. Today's Super Chat menu breaks down like this. $10, a signed Drew Pearson mini helmet entry. Uh, we've got a bunch of those entries. End of the month, we will raffle off that one. 
$50, you go in the Beer Bong Hall of Fame. And we will also pound a beer out of the Beer Bong. $20, the deal of the day is a shot. No shots, no helmet entries, no Beer Bong. So we will do, for the final you know, 20 minutes of today's live show, give or take, two for one for the first one of all of these. Two for one shot offer, two for one uh, Pearson mini helmet entry, and two for one beer bong if they come in. Speaking of Super Chats, Pug Racer, thoughts on Saints, former Saints center Will Clapp. Funny name, not a good football player though. Uh, would, would pass on that one. I'd rather let Hoffman have a shot at it, frankly. So March Madness is here. Boy, ain't it fun. Who do you have winning the NCAA tournament this year? We'll give some shout-outs to your bracket selections. Uh, some score updates, by the way. Illinois up by one over Moorhead State at halftime. UNC up by 20, 7.50 to go in that game. And Oregon, South Carolina tied up at 13 apiece. Arizona won by 20. Creighton won by 17. Duquesne held on for a win, uh, upset win over uh, four over BYU. And Tom Izzo, who was dead to me for saying that mid should not get auto bids anymore, uh, which I hated that comment. It's ridiculous and embarrassing, frankly. Uh, one blew out Mississippi State. I will say I had Michigan State winning, and I changed it out of principle and anger. And I have zero regrets in doing that. All right, who you got winning? Uh, UConn men, South Carolina women, Clayton. Uh, Texas is back from Archer of Infamy. <laughs> Maybe I should do out Texas basketball is back if they win. Continue that bit over there. Um, excuse me. Uh, what else we got for who you got winning? You have Tennessee, right, Producer Chris? Yeah. It's bold, man. Rick Barnes. I don't. I don't trust him. Uh, there's a lot of coaches I don't. I don't. I don't trust in March. You know, Matt Painter. Don't trust them in March. Doesn't doesn't go very well. Um. Get your answers in who you have winning the NCAA tournament this season. Well, I see Oregon in there from Brian. They're playing South Carolina right now. I will say, I actually put money on South Carolina because I, I little, little, uh, they were underdogs. I, I liked it. I might, I might regret that one. From Justin M., I don't understand the Cowboys' plan. It doesn't make sense. I personally would extend Dak, but Dallas was to the point where I'm ready to tank. The plan, I think, is to just not commit which is always a bad idea because eventually somebody else will make you commit. This team, I think, as a, I was talking to a buddy who's got a theory of they only want to spend about $200 million in cash each year, and they're about maxed on that already, already. Because, which is ridiculous when the salary cap is so high, like you're spending under the cap. It's, 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 it's not about it. It's not, it's not wrong. They haven't spent about $200 million the past three years. It's insanity. Um, their plan is that they don't want to spend in free agency and they don't want to commit one way or the other. They're so worried about the 2025 cap number, which makes no damn sense when they have the third most players signed and it'll probably be about $100 million in cap space. It doesn't make sense to me. It is, it is profoundly frustrating for me at this stage. Lance Dunbar's burner account, $20... Two for one shots. Can you and Chris Rochambeau rock, paper, scissors for the shots? Loser has to do both. I'll take Drake London over Justin Jefferson and fantasy this year. No, I'm still going with Justin Jefferson. He's 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 too good. Like I, I I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna take Justin Jefferson and, and be happy about it. Be like, I got my guy and not be upset about it. All right. Yeah, do it on shoot. Hey, hey, I'm doing paper. All right. All right, ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. I would never lie to you, Chris. I would never lie to you. No, 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 no. Do your shot. <laughs> do your shots. I would never lie to you, Chris. I know. It's great, right? <laughs> it's exclusively how I play rock, paper, scissors now. <laughs> I tell them what I'm going to do in advance. There's one. Ah, and two. Thank you, producer Chris. <laughs> Lance Dunbar saying, Chris, he told you. <laughs> Guess that shows how much Chris trusts me. <laughs> to not lie to him. It's funny. Appreciate that, Lance Dunbar's burner account. Entertaining. Uh, always fun. Always fun. Uh, all right, we'll get set up for a mock draft 
uh, that we will do here as elsewhere, ooh, South Carolina leads by one for now uh, over Oregon. UNC is going to put that game away as kind of a, a lull in the action uh, in March Madness. I like keeping you guys up there with the scores there. The Chat Sports Channel, by the way, is live uh, doing some whip around coverage uh, with eh, about 700 people watching with no close games. Moment. Not, it, they're, they're good when they're close games down the stretch. It's Tyler and oh, he's wearing a Tyler Smith. Smitty's wearing a Duke pullover. What a clown. I, I Poor Duke, always the victim. All right, I'm, I'm being mean. There probably are, are some Duke fans. Uh, we'll, we'll get to the, the, the mock draft here, which may or may not feature a Duke player involved. You guys are watching the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey. We are just over a month out from the 2024 NFL Draft, give or take, depending on when you're watching this one. I want to do another seven-round mock draft because I like to explore different scenarios, how things, but it's valuable for the actual draft process. Now, should we do a fan-led mock draft? Like the video if we should. The more likes we get, the more likely we are to do it. So Cowboys here in the first round. Some notable players off the board. Kind of a, of a, of a painful run here. Uh, Troy Fatanu goes pretty early. Byron Murphy goes early. Jackson Powers Johnson, Amarius Mims go 20 and 21. And that one stings to me pretty, pretty painfully. So some players who are on the board. You know, Nate Wiggins, which I knew would be, would be my top two players. But do you want an undersized three technique? Do you want to go with a corner who might not start for you in year one? Guyton and Barton have some concerns for me uh, in the sense that I, I think they want Tyler Smith at left guard, but Barton can't play left tackle. A.D. Mitchell's on the board at wide receiver. I could take one of the linemen, could take the best player available. What I'm going to do, though, is see who calls and makes a trade offer. And the Ravens step up. Now, this is a notable trade down. I'm moving down from 24 to 30. I would bet that several of those players I had interest in are going to go off the board here. But I get a top 100 pick. And with all of the needs I have, I'm going to trade down and hope one or two of those guys are still there and I can still address one of my needs. So I said yes to the trade. The players who went off the board, bookend receivers, Brian Thomas Jr., and A.D. Mitchell off the board just like that. Tyler Guyton goes 25. That one stung. Chop Robinson, Kool-Aid McKinstry, and Johnny Newton also go off the board. So several of the top players I, I, I was considering there are gone. One of them, two of them really were still left, and I have an extra top 100 pick. So do you, if the draft plays out similar to that, would you trade down? That's a steep drop to, to have happen. Might miss on some good players. Would you trade down? Why for yes and for no? It's the pinned comment on this video. If the ad comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. So that leaves these players on the board. Nate Wiggins out of Clemson, who would be my highest graded player. Pure BPA would be Nate Wiggins. You know, Lad McConkey is my next receiver. Jordan Morgan is my top tackle, but his arm length means he might play guard. I've got Graham Barton, and I got Zach Frazier. So I'm going to take Graham Barton. And part of my rationale here is I'm filling one of my glaring needs along the interior of this team by taking Graham Barton. He could play center for me, or I could plug him in at left guard and kick Tyler Smith out there to left tackle depending on what other picks end up becoming available. I think Barton is a very good football player. The, this team doesn't often miss on offensive linemen in the first round. They do a pretty good job of that. I would trust them from that perspective. I would have much rather had JPJ or Mims. If they're both gone, I like the trade down idea. Over now to round two. Some recent picks here. Zach Frazier goes 49th. Boy, wouldn't that have been nice. Uh, some players I like, Ricky Parasol out of Florida, Troy Franklin off the board. Those would have been some good value picks. I'm kind of glad Peyton Wilson's gone because the medical scares me. Ruka Roro out of Clemson uh, could be a defensive tackle option. 
I'm going to go DT because I need more help stopping the run and getting some push. I'm going to go with another fatty. Uh, Mike Zimmer likes to have multiple of these players on the roster. And if I can get Trevondre Sweat in the second, as opposed to the first, I have interest there. I don't know if he's ever going to truly be a three down player, but for a team that consistently talks about how they want to be better at stopping the run, I think Sweat can do that. I think Sweat and Mozzie Smith on first down, try one of them out on, on third downs as well, I think could absolutely work. So I'm going to gamble on that one. Some players who were on the board, I actually like Roman Wilson a lot, but it's, it's tough to me to justify a receiver, pure BPA, when I have, when I have to draft for need, unfortunately. Trey Benson was there. I'm, I got two-thirds. I'm going to gamble. One of these guys falls to me. I like Junior Colson. The Yale offensive tackle was also highly intriguing to me, but I also didn't want to spend back-to-back picks on the offensive line. I think I can start one of TJ Bass or Brock Hoffman. I just don't want to start both of them. We've got a deal for you guys. The Cowboys NFL Jam shirts are still available. Dak Prescott, CeeDee Lamb, Trayvon Diggs, Micah Parsons, or the good old days of Troy Aikman and Michael Irving. Chatsports.com slash Cowboys Jam. We will put that link for you in the comment section and the description of today's show. Comfortable t-shirt, by the way. I have one myself. A uh, big fan of it. CeeDee Lamb was wearing one of this year, too, which I thought was pretty funny at training camp. That's why we got the link for you guys. Chatsports.com slash Cowboys Jam. Some recent picks here. Uh, Blake Fisher at 82. I would have thought about that one and tried to go with another offensive line. I think you flipped to the left side, maybe. Run on receivers and players I liked. Jeremiah Trotter at linebacker. Javon Baker at Central Florida. Jamari uh, Trash, or Thrash, me, out of Louisville. And Jerry and Jones out of uh, Florida State also off the board. Now, Trey Benson went a lot earlier, but a running back that I'm a big fan of was on the board, Jalen Wright out of Tennessee. This is actually my number two back. He'd be number three if Jonathan Brooks didn't have the, 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 the torn ACL, but I love a ton about this kid's game. He is explosive. He is dynamic. He had 1,000 yards on 137 carries this, this past year. He can do some third down stuff for you as well. Highly intrigued with Jalen Wright. And I think if you let him be your explosive back, there's a lot of good things that could come from having him on the roster. I like his game a lot. My initial comp for him, when I told it to a buddy of mine in the NFL, he's like, go outside. What's his response? Might have been a bit too aggressive on that one. But athletically, you're talking about a, a, a large human being who's in the, in the, the, the 220s who also managed to run in, in below 4-4. I think Jalen Wright is absolutely worth a third-round pick. I love his game. Some other recent picks here in the third round, between pick 87 and between pick 93. Uh, Malachi Corley off the board. Patrick Paul off the board. Uh, Cedric Van Pran, Renardo Green, Kalen Bullock. So some guys that had kind of not been available that I, ooh, I would have had interest in. Corley also kind of stands out as an interesting fit. Um, I don't know if he's really a, a true receiver, but I thought a lot about him. I don't think Paul gets the throw. That's part of why I didn't take him previously. I'm like, he's not going to be there. If I had Tyron Smith, though, on this team, I think Patrick Paul could be a great round two pick, but that's kind of a luxury for a guy that needs time to adjust. Thought about the, the center as well. Um, but I also wanted to just for how does a mock draft go with one premium pick on the offensive line? So back to the running backs here. Lots of routes you can go. This team is probably going to draft one uh, on day two. Name a player, a running back, who you want to see the Dallas Cowboys draft. Another third round pick here, number 93. I'm going to go Cam Hart out of Notre Dame. This is, you know, you're probably going to have to do something long term on the outside. I think Cam Hart is an undervalued prospect who should go earlier than this. He's tall, he's long, he's athletic, and he didn't get beat that much in Notre Dame. You know, this, this is a Dan Quinn pick through and through, but I like the way Dan Quinn likes his corners. Tall, long, athletic, highly, highly intriguing to me uh, from that perspective. Other guys who are on the board, Dwayne Carter out of Duke, I'm intrigued by quite a bit as a sleeper there. Again, it's tough to go another DT when you took one earlier. Brendan Rice was there out of USC. Christian Mahogany, 
Jacob Cowing scares me, but he's a fun uh, dynamic piece along, uh, or at wide receiver, excuse me. Now, round five. You need an edge, by the way. And I am going to beg you guys to ignore the helmet and do not think this is just another Taco Charlton. Jalen Harrell, I think, offers more athletic juice than Taco Charlton ever did. I think was an even more productive, pure pass rusher for the Wolverines this year. I am thin at pass rusher. I need to get another one. Six and a half sacks, nine TFLs for the Wolverines. He can be my number four edge. The expectations will be very different than Taco Charlton's were. And I think the bar is very low, can be a better NFL player. I know the trauma that exists when you see that winged helmet, but I think you'll be okay. Over to the sixth round. And this guy, I think, should be like a fourth round pick at the, at the latest, maybe. But hey, I use the PFF Sim. Some guys fall. Give me Trevin Wallace, who is, by the way, a 30 visit for the Dallas Cowboys. Highly athletic football player. At times, I think, needs to work on the instincts a little bit. That can come with, with growth, et cetera. Adding another linebacker makes so much sense to me. I am fine short term with uh, Kendricks, Clark, and Overshone. That's kind of all I have right now at the position. So I think day two, day three, one or two linebackers makes so much sense. Now, we will be live for the 2024 NFL Draft, so do not miss out. Hit that sub button right now, youtube.com slash Cowboys TV. I'm going to double dip at linebacker. I, I need more depth there. I'm going to keep throwing day three assets at this position. Kalen Deloche out of Florida State is a highly fast football player, and he can blitz. He had seven sacks for Florida State. Now, I think he's more straight line athlete than he is kind of anything else, but if I'm taking another linebacker, that guy has to help on special teams, so that makes sense to me. Again, I have three viable NFL linebackers on my roster right now. I'm in the seventh round. I'm basically adding my premium undrafted free agent options. I'm going to need to get some more pieces in there. So I think going after Kalen Deloach and Traven Walls, two athletic linebackers, day three instead of drafting you know, one guy in round two, I'm fine with that plan. Final round seven pick is Frank Crum. It's a, it's a dart throw at offensive tackle. And when you're 6'8 and you have one of the best athletic score combines, I'm intrigued. The production was okay for Wyoming in terms of the grades and results and everything. Not exactly premier or off the charts or dynamic, but it does give me the options uh, to try to groom him. He could probably be a practice squad player for me uh, in the end. It's the back end of the seventh round. I don't like the seventh round uh, options, and I think even uh, really once you get into day three, I don't I don't love the offensive line options. But I don't have enough picks to fill all of my needs, do I? That's what I keep coming up to. I trade it down to get some more to get some help. I got Graham Bard who's going to start for me at somewhere on the interior of the offensive line. Sweat's going to help my run defense. Wright will start for me. Cam Hart will be a starter at corner. I'm I got edge ro rotation depth and. Jalen Hale, excuse me. I got two linebackers to round out a very thin unit in Trevin Wallace and Kalen Deloach, and I'm going to gamble on an offensive tackle to, to develop. I don't have enough picks to fill my needs. That's what I keep coming back to. That's why I like the trade down idea, but it's, it's a thin, it's just the math is not mathing for me in the end. So grade the Cowboys mock draft. A, B, C, D, or F. Go ahead and sound off. You can be honest. I can take the criticism in the comment section. I know it's a trend, by the way, Chris. People, get, people don't love all the individual picks, and they always go, well, what about this need? I, I didn't get a receiver in that class. I would have loved to have gotten a receiver, another offensive lineman, before the back end of the seventh round. I can't fill all my needs. That's why I hate their free agency class, because they didn't do enough to, to, to make it happen. Like... They're going to have to draft for need consistently, and that's, that's when they get into trouble. That scares me. $5 super chat here from Mark. Hope the family as well. Tell Jeremy, a.k.a. Little Bo Peep, we miss him. JJ thinks Trey will take over. He's not as good. JJ won't spend the money saved. Clowns. Fun fact is Trey Lance, he's even under contract this past season. How about that for concerning? 
Dwayne Jackson, $5. Were you surprised that Justin Fields went for a conditional sixth, basically giving him to the Steelers? Allegedly, um, the Bears decided to just send Fields to where he wanted to go. I don't know if that's true. Uh, maybe there were a team or two. That, I think a fourth could have been reasonable there. Um, I think the Fields market dried up pretty quickly. And at that point, they had to just they had to do the trade to, to do the trade. They needed to get him off the roster at that point to, to maximize Caleb Williams. So I was surprised he went for that little. Kenny Pickett went for more than, than Justin Fields. That makes no sense to me. I think the contractual status, one year left for Fields, was a red flag as well. Do not miss any Cowboys draft, trade, or free agency news. Hit that sub button. If you haven't already done so, we will have live NFL draft coverage for you guys here as well. So make sure you are subscribed. We will go to Chris B's super chat here before we sign off. Kick it over to our uh, college basketball coverage. Chris B, that's uh, one for agent joke. Team acts like the Oakland A's. They do. They continuously act like they are a poor small market team when they are not. Drives me insane. Remember, folks, to subscribe to the Cowboys Report, youtube.com slash Cowboys TV. There will be no loop today. We'll go ahead and end our coverage. What we will do is once the stream ends, it'll automatically redirect you to the Chat Sports March Madness YouTube coverage. We got some whip around coverage on the Chat Sports YouTube channel. So check that out. You'll get it on your feed here in just a second. We'll see you guys in the near future.